Hello, this is Gene. It's been a while since I did uh, the Cucks of the Week, and I found somebody uh, yesterday <laughs> that clearly uh, has to be part of this series. Um, it's funny because during this debate that he had with uh, Richard Spencer, he continually called um, Richard a cuck. So it's one of those people that projects themselves on somebody else when he's cl clearly doing all the cuckery here. His name is, of course, of those who've seen it, it's on the Mac Bake Alaska channel. I will put down the debate below. It's two and a half hours. I couldn't watch all of it, but I watched enough of it. And his name is Mike Tokes, T-O-K-E-S, I believe. Yes, it is. And uh, I did a little uh, research on him. It's funny that in this, you'll see the video, He's he's got normal brown hair, but he had... Uh, black or excuse me, black, blonde hair before. He was almost like an SJW, um, changes his hair every five seconds to be relevant, I guess. You don't see too many conservative people that he claims to be uh, continually changing their hair to get some sort of attention from it. Now, uh, the interesting thing about the debate was uh, we found out pretty soon that this guy is basically a, a Ben Shapiro wannabe. Um, Although he doesn't tell everybody up front that he's Jewish, we find out later that he is. And uh, he doesn't think that that's an issue to be, to be concerned about. And the interesting thing about it, uh, when Richard actually, about the 40 minutes in, he actually asked him who's, who he comes from, and he basically doesn't want to answer. But later on in the debate, he will say, "My, you know, when I go back to Israel or something like that. So he, he clearly is a Jewish person, although he doesn't, necessarily believe in the Talmudic uh, versions of the Jewish face, let's say. But his idea is can calling a Richard out and calling him a cuck because he doesn't go on mainstream media and say stuff about the ethnostate and about the Jewish influence when Richard does this. And people don't really understand Richard. I've told you many times on this channel that I don't necessarily look at him as the leader of whatever this is because he... He did, quote-unquote, coined the term alt-right, but Richard himself is not really somebody on the right when it comes to political um, philosophy. He believes in, like, uh, health care for everybody. And he things that are more liberal in nature, I would say he's more of a classical liberal like maybe I was, and maybe a little bit to the left of that. He voted for John Kerry. Uh, in, which I did as well. So, I mean, he's more of a liberal, but in this area when it talks about white identity, I mean, that's where he, that's where he gets his money from or he gets his uh, fame from. And the strange thing about Mike here is he kept saying that he was cucking out and not tell, telling the mainstream what the, the end goal of the alt-right is. And Richard does it. But again, understanding how Richard actually talks, he has a, a certain type of cadence when he's talking and people don't want to sit there and allow him to get his thoughts out. Of course, he was continually interrupting him and basically calling him lazy and using the F word to make it more important. You're being fake, uh, fake, excuse me, fucking lazy, intellectually lazy. And he had to continually had to uh, explain to him that, yeah, we're doing some of the stuff because this guy actually said that uh, the alt-right hasn't done anything, that Richard hasn't done anything to make white people aware of uh, the issues in the identity area of politics, let's say. And, you know, to a point, he might be right, because Richard doesn't have like 100,000 people on his YouTube channel following him. He doesn't have 100,000 people on Twitter following him. So he doesn't have the biggest reach that he has, but clearly he's been out to the mainstream media. He has talked about the ethnostate. He's been on on shows with, um, like, Charles, Charles Barkley and other uh, black people talking about this stuff, uh, making most of them people look stupid. They don't, they, people don't understand that when you're talking about, when you're advocating for the culture of whiteness or of being a white person, that everybody wants to say that's, that's somewhat racist, but everybody else can do what they want to. And he talked about this. And in his way, how Richard talks, and there are times I've said that Richard has been somewhat a, a cuck, but not here. Uh, a guy's calling him out for him not saying what the alt-right is supposed to be about. 
Now, he's saying, I, this white Mike guy continually said, I've talked to several people on the alt-right, and they say this. And then he says, what are you talking about? I'm right here. I'm the guy that is the alt-right. Now, he didn't necessarily didn't say it that way, but he was saying, but I'm right here. So ask me the question that you want me to ask. And if you don't think that I've been doing enough, or it, he said several times, Richard said that we agree with a lot of things here, but you you just have this ability that says that, that uh, there is no there is no uh, influence from the Jewish uh, lobby lobbyists in this country. That it's still the, my my constitution that we have to fall under behind. That you're not you don't care about what color they are that comes in this country or where they come from, as long as they're going to fall under this this mythical constitution, which we all really support. I mean, clearly I did. I did it for 24 years. I, I defended the Constitution. I believe in it. Um, but there are some people that will never be assimilated in this country. They want to have their own culture, and they didn't come from the constitutional type of background that people from Western Europe came from or Eastern Europe came from. They, they just didn't, and they want to continually do their things. So it's just interesting to see somebody come on TV or come on into a live stream and continually tells Richard that he's a cuck. <laughs> and as much as I have problems with Richard, because again, I don't know if he's actually the right person. He's the maybe the right person for right now. Uh, there has to be something later on that if there's going to be a real movement. And I don't necessarily think it's the alt right. I think first of all, the alt right really isn't alt right. Isn't right. It, um, there's nobody uh, that are re Republicans that will would ever support right now. Will never support. Something like a, a white uh, ethno state, or such a severe um, immigration reform that goes down to, we're only going to bring in people from, let's say, Europe, that look like <laughs> that look like white people. That'll never happen. The uh, Republicans are not. They are not. They're just not people that are going to do that. And the, the Democrats and the Republicans are a lot closer when it comes to immigration than they are on some other issues when it comes to stuff, you know, abortion and pro-choice and all that stuff. They, they, they can't really get together on that. But clearly when it comes to abortion, they, you know, was it nine or eight or nine actually voted for this new immigration bill that's going to the, uh, the president's desk, which he's going to veto. Uh, they, they, they believe under this thing, this, this man thinks that he's the next Ben Shapiro. And, you know, Penn is a very smart guy, but he's, he has the same issue that this guy has. He never, you know, Richard said that Israel is an ethno state, and he said it's not really yet. <laughs> it's like, okay, but can we have it like it is in Israel? Can we have it that it's 95% white people in this country? I'm not saying we should have that, okay? It was never like that when I was growing up. It was like 89 to 20, 90 when I grew up, and then it went down to 62 where it's at right now. He said 67 last night. It's not. It's 62 or 63, and each year as we goes on is white people do not re reproduce and as well and when they start mixing for other people that that comes down further and further and lower um and if something even if if, if black people didn't wouldn't stop aborting their babies that would go down any further and the idea that that really uh kind of got me going on with this whole thing is he said that you can at any time you can um somebody just walked up into my driveway, but I don't know why. So I'm going to, anyway, he started talking about, uh, the fuck? something might happen to me here, so I'll just keep this on. Now he turned around. I don't know what this person's doing. Anyway, getting back to what we're talking about. Sorry about that. Um, he started talking about that uh, that white people don't have any problem talking about the issues that we have. That uh, we have the right to to do it, and nothing nothing happens to anybody. And Richard's like, "What are you talking about? All the people that are that are actually um, getting banned off uh, social media are people that have somewhat of these ideas." And we are called out. And right now, the ADL and the Congress are putting a bill through that wants to 
Conclair, anybody who's a white nationalist is d domestic terrorism. And that's strange here. I mean, because uh, Richard has said many times before that, you know, I'm not a white supremacist, and I don't think he is. I don't think anything I talk about is about white supremacy here. Um, he said, I'm okay why you saying white nationalist. So clearly ADL and other uh, Jewish organizations are trying to um, put it to where law is going to tell people like me that I can't talk about white interests online and I'll be labeled as a de domestic terrorism and I'm sure that my phones will be tapped and everything else will happen from that just for somebody who said I want to advocate for my own people. So he's like, well, you can do this and there's no reason why you can't do it when clearly there is a, a, there's a foot behind that says uh, Google that wants to stop you from talking about this. Um, all the tech companies, but he talks about this. He said, we got to stop the liberal tech companies from take, not letting our message come out, the conservative under the Constitution things. But he doesn't think there's some sort of thing out there that is driven by his own people to stop people that have a different opinion about uh, identity when it comes to white identity. That it's okay that black identity is fine. We can sit up and uh, watch Black Panther and all the man, all the uh, the black people can stand up and with their hands up saying black power and everybody's fine with that. But let's change it around and just have a picture of uh, something where it's something different like that. And everybody stood up and said, hell, Hitler or some shit. Everybody be going to jail. I mean, the, the, the naivety and the actual stupidity of anybody saying that it's, it's, it's easy for anybody that talk about I, uh, identity when it comes to this, that they're not, that they're not going to be called racist. Now, the reason why he's doing this and why he keeps telling Richard that uh, he's a cuck for saying it because he wants Richard to come out and, and talk about everything. Like, yeah, if we have an ethno statement, maybe somebody might be killed. He wants to separate uh, the alt-right from his version of the right, whatever, the, the new right or whatever. And so he cannot be called a racist. He brought it up several times in this, in this uh, video that he doesn't want to be labeled, labeled as a racist. And I'm like, I'm sorry, you're going to be part of this because this, is not, this happened before the alt-right. They said that 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 uh, Bush was a racist. That that um, Ronald Reagan was a racist. Everybody that's on the right has been called racist all the time. It's just people who are on the white in the white identity movement are saying they don't care if you're going to call me that. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm just saying that hey. And the problem is this guy obviously has a problem with his self-esteem that he doesn't want people to call him a racist. I just think it is. His arguments are like everybody else's that are falling under the Constitution, that saying that we're all individuals, and that his, you know, he continually says this collective bullshit and this fucking uh, la lazy intellectual thing, and he say this shit over and over again. I guess he thinks that he's a Jewish person, and maybe he's going to be smarter than the guy, and he can just talk over us. And then Richard just sitting there looking at him and saying, you know what, a lot of what you're talking about I agree with, and I don't understand what your attitude is. I said, but... Why can't we talk about things like this? And you're saying that we can do this, but clearly there's a bill that's going to the Congress right now that says that anybody that talks like this is going to be labeled as a d domestic terrorism. Uh, and it probably will go through because the Jewish, uh, the Jewish interests take over everything when it comes to that. When both p parties stand up for any legal leader in this country, and it's somebody from Israel, that ought to tell you enough what's going on in this country. You know, you can all love Israel and, and, and be behind them and all that stuff. But all I've ever said before when it comes to this, and I said this to Ben Shapiro and other Jewish commentators, why is it okay for them and it's not good enough for us? Now, some people will, will continually say that. Some people say it works in Israel having a wall. Now, whether you believe about Palestine and all that shit and, and all that's going on with them, but they say it's okay there. But not enough people here support a wall when it comes to the Congress. They don't sit there and, and just fight, fight for the wall. They would if it was Israel and would give them money to put a, a wall up there because we have to save them for some reason. It's okay for them to push out anybody that's not them, not part of their tribe. But we don't even go that deep. Richard said, you know, I, I would go with 90% less when it comes to immigration, and that'd be a good uh, pointy, uh, starting point. I've said that forever. I would be zero. I'd be no more. And the only people that come to this country should, should be, you know, this is, I'm going to be further down than Richard is and probably, I mean, obviously in real life that Richard probably would say that if you're European with uh, European descent, you should be able to come to this country if you have a skill and all that stuff. It's merit and all that stuff. Before we allow anybody from other uh, 
parts of the world to come here to help our Scott back to where it was. And whatever that sounds, I don't really care if people think that's racist. I think that if you want to deserve, um, preserve uh, the culture, that, that might be a way to go. Um, the white man is not waking up, and I, I did my video yesterday about it, and we're just, people think that we're waking up. And some people are waking up, but they're the same people, and they're talking about the same stuff over and over again. So when this guy comes in and basically tells Richard that you're cucking out, or he can't say anything about saying fuck in front of it, and then he apologizes for it, and because he thinks that he's, that any identity movement for white people is going to be um, a, thorn, a thorn in the, in the conservative movement, well, that's fine. That's really what that's there for. Um, again, the alt-right, I don't necessarily think that that's the right term because I don't think the alt-right has any a, a, a political po philosophy that's right or left. It's we advocate for our culture, and we understand that culture is, ra is, ta is, <laughs> is tied to race. And we understand there's differences before the, between the, the races. We don't do it from a, a, a superior viewpoint. We just say that there's differences. And we're talking about on a group level. Now, obviously, there's individuals that are smarter than me that are from Pakistan, let's say. They have a higher IQ than me, can talk better than me before my stroke, uh, could do things with their... I, I knew several people from that area that were in engineers uh, when I worked in Harris. I've seen people from all around the world, uh, people that are Asian, that uh, clearly were smarter than me when it comes to math and other things, things that I were better at. The thing that, that uh, this guy does, and I don't know if he's an acid jack, whatever, the one that like David Rubin is, uh, the, they have better verbal skills. And I thought that overall, he, I mean, he, he was at the same level as Richard, but they're, they're different how they talk. So if you're going to be on that side anyway, if you're part of the alt-light or you're about the Constitution or if you're somebody that loves uh, Ben Shapiro, you might think that maybe Richard got taken, you know, taken down there. Uh, but if you understand how Richard talks and how he gets his uh, information out, um, you would think that he probably won that debate. And, I, you know, it wasn't early on. He didn't wait five seconds and said, you're Jewish. After about 40 minutes, he finally just asked the question. And as most people, it's like being online. You see this all the time that these people that work for media, uh, they say shit about anti-white shit. And at the end of the day, I'm not white, I'm Jewish. And this is the same thing this guy did. <laughs> he, just, he just pushed himself. I'm not going to talk about it because I'm not. Uh, but it, should it really matter? It shouldn't matter the color of your skin. It shouldn't matter. He did the whole multi, uh, multi uh, Martin Luther King speech, let's say. Of course, who actually wrote that? Nobody really knows. <laughs> but, you know, he obviously delivered it, and it was a great speech. But the point I'm trying to make here is when somebody is calling somebody like Richard a cuck when it comes to going on the, the mainstream media and talking about the alt-right is talking about, when it talks about identitarianism and been on with people that have just, just basically said he was racist the entire time he was talking to him, and he still has a calm demeanor that uh, is a benefit to everybody to see it. Now, again, you can watch this. You can say, I don't agree with that. And you can go on with your merry way. And I'm just going to sit there and say, if you're like me, that what you're doing is basically looking, you're, you're turning your back on your people. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, and if you're saying after I die, like uh, uh, Carl Benjamin said, it doesn't really matter when I die. I don't care about what happens after me. It's all about me and my individual bullshit then fine. You can be that way. But I'm telling you, when you're at the, at the end of your life, you're going to realize that uh, the, the decisions that you didn't make 20 or 30 years before, and you see people in your family or, or people that are outside your family that from your culture are just being destroyed, being the, the real marginalizing that we're going to see uh, is 30 or 40 years from now. And the idea that the oppressed uh, black people in this country or any other uh, race in this country that were oppressed, you wait till it goes the other way. Now, there are going to still be a lot of people that are going to look like me that are going to be in power, but they're going to be white liberals. If we allow uh, people from the third world to come in, they're going to vote uh, liberal, and they're going to keep these people in power, and they're going to sit there and say things like, I, I can't believe that my, my grand, uh, um, 
son was talking about how much he wanted to look like his friend that has dark hair, dark sin, and black or brown eyes. Uh, basically, that it's better to look that way because mix is, is the future. And this is somebody that that is the most powerful uh, female in the United States politically. Uh, was the Speaker of the House and said this shit on on the floor of the of the Senate of the Congress, and nobody called her out for it, saying that that's anti-white when it clearly is. Uh, it's like that's the future because they believe this shit. It's in their fucking core that they think diversity is the strength, and we have enough diversity in the white race. We are the most diverse of any race, and we just are. <laughs> so, and we. The fact that we don't want to protect that, and we do, there we want to, or we want to be cool, and say I'm going to be all this Black Panther shit, and I'm going to be like that, and it's going to be I'm going to be relevant that way, and I'm going to virtual skin everybody else that I'm a good white person, instead of actually defending and at least talking about the history of the of our culture and the white uh, race. There's a lot of things to be pride about, and there are people to talk about this. Um, but there are so many people that are nihilistic, uh, and, and that's a and that's only another video that that why why we have this, and it really affects um, men, especially boys, especially women are their their brain and what they're what they're uh, uh, attracted to is different than men. Um, men have got to be the ones that have to write down the history, that have to defend that, that have to uh, talk to their sons and their daughters and and, and talk about this. Uh, women can do it as well, but it it, it comes from a different. I'm not going to say of a powerful struggle, but anyway. Anyway, that's what I want to talk about. So overall, uh, I thought Richard handled him pretty well. It was funny to watch, and I'll put that video down below. It's a long video, but I would start around about 39 in, 39 minutes in, if you want to see him basically ask the question, "Are you Jewish or not?" and see how he res responded to it. And um, the deflecting that they do, not say do, but the idea that when you're like this, that you just believe that everybody is going to be fine once you're the Constitution, when we don't see that right now. We have uh, groups that are basically saying that we don't care of the Constitution. We're just going to come in here and some stupid white liberal judge is going to shut down the president from doing his constitutional right to uh, limit immigration. Um, it's just, it's going to be within, you know, it's the whole thing about you're going to destroy yourself from it within, and we're doing it right now. People think it's the communists or it's the Marxists. Uh, it's also people like us that trying to feel better about themselves because they've been told for so long that they're, they're the problem. And before I leave, one little thing, and if you're still listening to me, thank you. I mean, it's 23 minutes in. There's an issue, uh, that shooting that happened. Uh, a lot of people getting online and they're talking about guns roll and what people talking about. It's not the guns and everything like this. There's more here. There is a boy crisis that's going on in this country that we just will not handle because there's no fathers in the homes. There's no fathers or uh, men in public schools. There's so much here that is impacting all of this stuff. And as bad as it is, clearly... This boy was from a single mother. He, uh, he was adopted, adopted, and the father died in 2004. So for 15 years, she, he was dealing under a single woman. And everybody said she tried to do her best, but it wasn't enough. You have to have men in the house. You have to have men, mentors at school, and men who are at home that are married have to be mentors to their sons. Because as much as I rail at feminism and all that shit, at the end of the day, we're the ones that continue, that we continue to do most of the violence in this country. Yes, the violence happens to us more as well, and people don't want to talk about that, but it's still us that are, that are doing it. And you have to have men to mentor these boys at an early age. They have to give value to these kids. And this is the, the, the culture is taking away the value from kids, from boys especially. And they've empowered girls and they let them do everything, and they just look at boys and say, you're the fucking problem. And that has to stop, because it's, it'll never change. Somebody's going to have access to shit if they want to go kill people. But if somebody had got to this kid early on, whether he had emotional issues, but somebody came in and mentored him when he was young, 
a, a male figure, this would have happened. Regardless of his mental issues, uh, how the people look at guns, this shit wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened up in Sandy Hook. It wouldn't have happened with uh, uh, the guys in um, Columbine. Although there, there, was a, there was a father at home, but they didn't give a shit what the, their kids were doing. Uh, they, were, they had guns in their, in their, in their room. And bad, bad parenting. There are some people that are born evil, yes. But clearly, every statistic points to this. You need to have fathers in the home. You have to have males uh, at school to help your guys grow up to be men. You just have to have this. You can't have the, the culture saying that you're the problem and expect that nothing's going to happen. This is what happens. Okay, thank you for watching. You guys have a good day and a good weekend. Please share this and, and like it. I think that I'm going to be on a live stream uh, in March with somebody. When that happens, I'll put it out there. I'm the guy that I'm going to do it with. He's got more people than me, so they'll do. We'll talk about it as well. I don't know if it's going to be a hit job against me. I don't think so. Uh, this person's not quote unquote alt right, but he's a, is aware of the alt right. So I think it'll be a, a fair uh, discussion. And uh, he just came back from his sabbatical. <laughs> so he's back, and he just emailed me now. So I'll be there in March talking to somebody, and maybe, as I said before, some of these little live streams that I see. I would love to be able to be on these. Now, I don't necessarily can hold my own with these guys. They're better verbal than I am, especially after my stroke. But my ideas, I think, are relevant. And that's basically why I'm here. Again, every video, I only get 40 or 50 views. Sometimes I get better. I just want somebody that sees this and says, he, he, there's something to what he has to say. And maybe if I'll do something more than that man, me, and then I'll wake up more people. This guy, Michael Tokes, continually talking about red pilling and red pilling and red pilling. I did a video a couple weeks about, or last week about red pilling. He is one version of, ver of what is red pilling, and what I believe is red pilling is a different level. He can't get behind that Jewish thing because if that Jewish thing stops everybody to get to the alt right, if you're in the alt light or whatever, then you will not go down any further than that because for some reason you can't. Because at the bottom of that, that rabbit hole is re race realism, is white identitarianism, it is the, whatever the alt-right is, whether you believe in that or not. Um, but we should be allowed to talk about white issues, and we should not be declared a terrorist organization because what I say might be looked at as a white nationalism, nation, nationalist. I'm a guy that my culture is being um, impacted severely, and I want to stop it before it becomes like South Africa. Again, thank you for watching. You guys have a good day, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.